running along the distance from east to west to prominent hill ranges. One hill range runs fairly close to the northern shoreline, and it is this seafront coastal area extending from the northern coast to the hilltop that was occupied and developed as the, uh, by the first settlers who lived on this island of New Providence and developed our capital city, Nassau. We did so on that frontal site. And almost in the center of this hilltop area and forming the southern limits of the city is a higher area which is now known as Mount Fitzwilliam. This area was acquired by the government of the day to establish the official residence and office of the governor of the colony at that time, the Honorable Richard Fitzwilliam, who was governor of the Bahamas from 1733 to 1740. And it is still known as Mount Fitzwilliam and it continues to this day as the site of the official residence of the Governor General. Presently, a picturesque and closed 10-acre estate, which in earlier years was much larger in scope and extended southwards beyond the southern slope of the hill now officially known as the Southern Recreation Ground, but in earlier times called the Government Ground. Immediately to the rear of the present site of Government House is a public school, formerly known as the Western Senior School, but now named C.R. Walker Senior High School and immediately south of this area, on the southern slope of the hill, is a public library and also a health clinic, below which, on the level ground, at the southern side of the hill range, is a large public playground, now known as the Southern Recreation Ground, <coughs> which is itself bounded on the south by Coburn Street, which is named for Governor Francis Coburn, who was governor from 1837 to 1844. Now, Coburn Street forms the northern boundary to St. Agnes Anglican Church, which is bounded on its southern side by Lewis Street, named after another governor. It is also important that as we recall where we have come from, we should reflect from time to time on who we are. The Nassau Guardian, one of our two daily newspapers, was founded in 1844. And six years ago, in the year 2004, when that newspaper celebrated its 160th anniversary, I was invited to comment on the organizational history of that newspaper, which had operated in the downtown city area since 1844, but moved to its present location over the hill some 46 years ago. I stated at that time that when the newspaper was founded by Edwin Mosley in 1844, only about one quarter of the island's total population could read and write. And the very large majority of them were from the white community, comprising the more privileged and economically elite white residents who lived and worked and socialized in the town of Nassau. Indeed, it was only a decade earlier that these white residents of Nassau had been legally deprived of their right to own slaves, with the coming into effect 
of the Emancipation Act of 1834. These white folk, as they were referred to, never came over the hill, or at most, hardly ever. And they were mostly the employers of the over the hill crowd, who therefore remained generally docile and subservient to the folks uptown. Indeed, I well remember as a youngster during our tourist season, which then was only in the winter months, when tourists visited, they would sometimes be taken on tours of Grimstown to see the native section. And they would often throw out coins for the young boys like myself to pick up. And so it was in those early days that if you lived or hailed from an area like Grandstown, you were not only a black or a colored person, but you were also underprivileged and attached with an automatic badge of social inferiority and subservience. Hence, one frequently was dismissed with the assessed and rhetorical condemnation adapted from the age-old biblical question, can any good thing come out of Grandstown? Mm -hmm. Geographically, in 1844, when The Guardian was first published, Specific areas of New Providence were identified by their districts and by separate settlements, each with its own boundaries, each with its special indigenous features, its particular segment of the population, and its historical origins. The Guardian, like all other business establishments of the day, was then located to the north of the whole hill range, which I have described, as for, which formed a, a ridge parallel to the harbor of Nassau. And it provided a natural southern and protective boundary to the area of land which then comprised the town of Nassau. All official buildings, starting with government house, as well as the city's only bank at the time. And all the government offices, all the commercial shops, all the professional offices, as well as the electrical power plant, public works department, all were located north of the hill and primarily on or along Bay Street. And any enterprising resident of Over the Hill with a flair for trading or artisanship who decided to go into business for himself or herself and established his workplace in his neighborhood had to contend with being designated by his peers and by potential customers as having merely a petty shop. <laughs> And penny shop then became a term of art. <laughs> As a proud product of Grandstown, where I was born and lived until marriage, my earliest recollection 